Hey guys, I've recently posted this sort of a meme asking whether Alan Holdsworth belongs up there with a very narrow but high quality set of uh, brilliant composers, the most influential composers of our culture actually, like Mozart, like Bach, like Stravinsky, Beethoven, and others. And um, to my surprise, many of the answers were very supportive. I think people got the idea and actually agree that he belongs up there because of his brilliance. Uh, but I did get a few comments which were uh, not very supportive of this idea and I'd like to read a few of those. So, for example, although all of the above uh, were also performers, they were mainly known as composers. So, it is apples and oranges in a lot of ways. Or another one was, no, maybe Frank Zappa since he was more of a composer. Uh, and another one, uh, also interesting, was Holtzworth music deviated a lot uh, from the tradition of classical music. His music style of choice is for many not considered art music, but popular music instead, such as prog, jazz, fusion, etc. Improvisation, which was one of his most remarkable qualities, plays a major role for that matter. He could be there uh, with those composers if his work was oriented that way. Now. I perfectly respect um, these opinions, um, there's nothing wrong with them, it's just that I disagree. Because first of all, there were two things that uh, were kind of mentioned. One is the apples and oranges kind of thing. Um, so uh, because Holtzworth was not a per se composer like we perceive Stravinsky or, um, or uh, Mozart or Bartok or other people who are not there in the meme, um, because of that, because it was mainly about improvisation, then it doesn't mean then it does mean that he was not a great composer. And I'd like to ask you, how is it even relevant um, how he created his music? I mean, why does it matter if it's improvised or composed note for note? The only thing that matters is the bottom line, is the end result. And the end result, to me, v uh, was very compositional. I mean, uh, even the solos, yeah? Not to mention the compositions themselves, but even the solos in the albums were not really improvised. They were actually um, a result of maybe hundreds of takes, one after another, and I'm sure there was a convergence in those takes, meaning he, that he reached this kind of final take after a lot of trial and error, and after realizing, I like this direction, I like that direction, I like this phrase, I like that phrase, and he corrected a lot, maybe punched a lot, maybe uh, retook the whole um, solos, but it still was a compositional process in the sense that there was some kind of curation between stuff that I like and stuff that I don't like. This is not improvisation by any means, because improvisation, whatever you do, it's there, and that is it. In the albums, at least, his solos sound to me much more composed than what was in the live shows. So I would uh, refer to his albums, at least, as actual compositions from almost the beginning to the end, at least most of that stuff. The other thing is that um, if we actually listen to his uh, compositions, to his tunes, yeah, I think we will find that everything about them is just the top of the line and not just the playing. Holtzworth is perceived as a guitarist because, of course, his sheer virtuosity and brilliance on the instrument leads us to think that he is a great guitarist. Of course, this is true, yeah? But it doesn't mean that he was not making really brilliant content with, the, uh, with that playing, with those solos, or with those chords, or with those themes that he wrote, actually. I am also not trying to take away or belittle uh, the greatness of Frank Zappa, Miles Davis, Ornette Coleman, John Coltrane, Charlie Parker, or any of the other brilliant, amazing, ingenious jazz players and musicians that we've seen um, during the 20th century. But Holtzworth is the question here, right? So let's put his music uh, versus the music um, of those brilliant classical composers. And there is a reason why I chose classical composers and not jazz artists. Because with jazz artists it's clear, right? With classical composers, I would like to argue that his music is at that level of composition, not just of improvisation, not just of um, soloing or anything else, but really at level um, of composition with those guys. So let's put it in points and we can see that um, this is actually true.
So point number one, coherent, memorable compositions. I think that anyone who listens enough to what he wrote, whether it's solos or compositions, the themes themselves, then I think it's clear that he's very coherent. He's very um, accessible after a few listens. And it doesn't matter how complicated it is. And this is sheer brilliance. To write such complicated music and still be accessible to anyone who wishes and, open, and is open enough to listen, this is really uh, a unique property that is common to many of the 20th century composers. And even, of course, to earlier composers, which are already very accessible because their language is dominating for at least 200 years, right? So if we're talking about better than Mozart, Bach, Vivaldi, and Chopin, it's uh, very obvious that um, they are uh, tonal and they are uh, very coherent to Western music, right, and to Western listeners. But even Stravinsky and Schoenberg and uh, others, you know, like Debussy, like Ravel, they are also very um, accessible, in my opinion. Um, and that's the, you know, one property that is kind of um, un um, unifying all these guys together. <laughs> The other thing is uh, the, the perfectly consistent and um, independent language, musical language, because Holzworth reinvented music in many ways. He just reinvented stuff from the ground up, took his own scales, his own melodic uh, pattern, his own harmonic pattern, right? And um, he created music out of it. So it's not some kind of a, you know intellectual exercise. This is really the music that is built from new building blocks. I think this is a very good trait uh, to compare with these guys, right? They all did just that. Next point is the harmonic innovation. I think anyone who listens a, a little bit to his uh, music realizes that there is amazing harmonic innovation there. He actually took not just harmony itself and all those voicings, he also made some really unique voice leading out of that stuff. Yeah, and I don't know many composers who actually did that, even the greatest ones. I mean, ever since Bach, we all have some rules of, uh, of uh, you know, voice leading, which he didn't break completely, but he did do it with new scales. And that is something that I don't think many people did, right? Even the greatest uh, musicians, not all of them actually dealt with that kind of stuff. Next point, melodic innovation. Of course, writing good melodies is a property of many great composers, and it doesn't matter which genre, which style, but writing such intricate, complex melodies on one hand, and still very memorable, just like with the harmonic language, it's something that not many people achieved. I think that when we listen to his solos, we can easily see after a few listens, when we start to memorize them, that they are very memorable, they are very lyrical, lyricable, like we can actually sing them if it was at, at least slow motion, because many of us don't have this vocal technique to sing that, but we can actually follow that. <laughs> Sound and production innovation, I think there's very little to say about this because it's obvious that he came up with amazing technologies that were not very common at the time. I mean, very few, um, you know, jazz musicians or even musicians in general dealt with all the stuff that he came up with. Um, and uh, that translated very well to his music. He actually mastered um, audio and technology and sound so well. Uh, that he put it to use to his own music and to the description of what he wanted to say. So, uh, although, of course, old composers don't have that kind of stuff because there was no recording at the time, I think this is another thing that he added 
into the dish. And of course, instrumental innovation, I think there's not much to say about that because we all realize very easily, I think this is the one thing that everyone agrees on, um, that um, how he affected and changed the game of guitar, but also other instruments because he played with really terrific musicians that uh, also changed their uh, instrument and the way people think about their instrument. So this is um, not much to say, but this is also a common property with many of those uh, brilliant composers who really expanded um, the range of instruments, the way they are played, the way they are perceived. And that's another point um, that we can really compare him, and that's not apples and oranges. And finally, cultural impact. And that's where the uh, big question mark is placed, because it's too early to say how uh, Holzworth really affected the uh, Western culture or, you know, like other than just talking about musicians. I'm talking about the wider circles of uh, non-musicians. How are they perceiving him? I think right now there's not much impact outside of our circles, outside of the music circles. Uh, inside the music circles, anyone who even touched a little bit of his music cannot go back. I'm sure about that. But uh, yeah, I mean, cultural impact like uh, Bach or Beethoven, it's too early to say. I mean, even Bach was discovered 100 years after he died by Mendelssohn Bartholdi and only then he became the great Bach that we know, Johann Sebastian Bach. So um, sometimes history just, you know, takes its turns much slower than uh, we want it to. I would love if uh, Holzworth was already like a household name, as Pat Metini coined it once, but he's not, not yet. And maybe he will be and maybe not, but uh, I think this is where the great question mark is and that's why it's a question, why or not why, whether or not Holdsworth belongs up there with those guys who are household names. But other than that, I think that all the other points, the technical points at least, um, they are definitely consistent and uh, in line with the other guys. It's not just about guitar playing, it's really about the composition and the bottom line of music, how innovative it was and uh, how impacting it was at least within the musician circles. <laughs>